If you're like me and you like your world ending like you like your pizza in 20 minutes or less, then Seals of Cthulhu might be for you. Thanks for calling Cthulhu Pizzeria. Would you like to try our world pizza? No, I, I won't accept the charges for a collect call. Sorry, another collect call of Cthulhu. He wants to be the eater of worlds again. Hey, this is JT and welcome to G Club. If you're new to the channel and you'd like to see more board game related content such as interviews and epic board game trailers, start now by hitting that subscribe button and hitting that bell to be notified of new content. In reviews, we begin by talking about the best moment of the game. Talk about if I like it, get in the pros and cons, and even some comparisons. So, without further ado, let's get into the best moment of Seals of Cthulhu. When you gain control of Cthulhu and strike fear into your opponent's eyes, that's got to be the best moment of the game. In Seals of Cthulhu, you are either a Cabal of Cultists, attempting to collect artifacts to bring about the end of the world, or a team of investigators trying to save it. With each player having one half of each artifact in their hand, they will be attempting to gain the most control over the city. Players will struggle for each piece of artifact, using the forces and pieces of artifacts under their control to outbid their opponent. The player who wins the bid will gain control over that piece of the artifact, while the other player will gain the forces and or pieces of artifacts that were bid during that round. If a player gains control over both pieces of an artifact, during their turn they will have the option to use the power of the completed artifact once during the game. The players will continue taking turns struggling for influence over artifacts until each player has one card left in their hands. And whoever has the most control points at the end of the game wins. So when you outbid your opponent to get the other half of the artifact to summon Cthulhu and still lose the game, that's gotta be the best- Wait, what? You can still lose when you have Cthulhu? So that was the best moment of the game, but did I like it? Unfortunately, I don't like it. I think it's got some fun and innovative ideas, but it just falls short in my mind. But before you make up yours, let's get into the details of what I think in The Balancing Act. Now this does have excellent production value, even for a prototype. I mean, it looks like a creepy worn out book, and even the rules look old and tattered. Now this may be something that ends up getting changed in production, but everything else drips of theme in this game when it comes to the production value, but then it just has these generic meeples. I'm not a big fan of bidding, but I have to say that I really enjoy the tug of war aspect of the bidding in this game. It makes it interesting and fun. Now, the thing I don't like about bidding is what is present here, and that is that you can over or underestimate on your bidding and paint yourself into a corner. I do have to say, I like the cultist or the investigator ID cards that bring in player powers. It really freshens up the game after a few plays. On the other hand, several of the artifact powers, well, they feel kind of situational or samey. Now the tension of this game of trying to read your opponent and then trying to decide, do I, do I sacrifice this artifact? Do I, do I let them have it and I'll take the influence because maybe I need that influence later? That's, that's a lot of the fun of this game. but. Because of the artifact powers sometimes being situational, that payoff from that tension just kind of falls flat. Now, when you first start playing this game, sometimes it takes a few rounds to really get your head wrapped around what's going on, and a few games to really get into what strategies you're supposed to be using. On the other hand, once you start figuring out what kind of strategies you can use and you got your head wrapped around the game, well, it does have a decent amount of depth for just having a handful of cards. So I feel kind of like the odd man out on this one. A number of my gamer friends really enjoy this game. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to link a video at the end of this one to show you a friend of mine who's actually really enjoyed it so you can check out his review. As I mentioned in the balancing act, one of my biggest problems with this game are the artifact powers. You go through all this work and all this tension to try to get these artifacts put together. And once you get them put together, the powers, well, if they're kind of situational, and like you get a card that does allows you to flip over a card that's face down and you never have a face down card, well, the payoff just kind of falls flat. 
Now, the fun part of this game, as I mentioned, is that tension, that back and forth between you and your opponent, trying to read them, trying to figure out what they're doing, and, and really trying to wrestle away that artifact from them, because you know what card that is. And that's the fun part of this game. The production of the art, the box, the cards, everything about it that was included in my prototype, if the final product is anything like this, well, I gotta say at $12, you're getting a tremendous value out of this. So if you're in the market for a two-player micro game that has bidding, great production value, and has your old pal Cthulhu in it, well, maybe this is a game for you. So go check it out in the Kickstarter in the link that I've got in the description below. So if you like this video, you can check out this other content that the G-Club Lab Techs picked out specifically for you. In fact, there are two halves of the same artifact in each one of these videos, so you should probably go watch them and prevent the end of the world.